Good morning, or maybe good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We have a global audience here, and I want to wish you a happy day, no matter what time of day it is. I'm excited to be here, as always, and I'd love for you to say that you're here by popping in. I'm putting your name up on the screen, recognizing you if you don't mind. Give me your name. Sometimes it says LinkedIn user, so give me your name and where you're from, and uh, I'll recognize a few people as we get started. So today we're talking about power structures and the three types of resistance. Power structures and the three types of resistance. Last time, last week, we talked about resistance from a very general uh, point of view. So today I'm going to go a little deeper. And these are some uh, things that are in the book from Conflict to Courage, How to Stop Avoiding and Start Leading. And um, so I want to start with a story, and this is just bringing to my awareness how much we need this uh, kind of information. Hi there from the Netherlands. Thank you for joining. Wonder what time it is there. <laughs> Hi, April from Maryland. Nuf Obeid, if I'm pronouncing that right, from Saudi Arabia. I know it's a way different time zone there. Uh, Jalene Palmer from Texas. Yolanda Brown, hey, I've seen you on my threads giving some comments. Thank you for joining. Um, Kenneth, hi, good morning. Marilyn, got some people from Marilyn. Hey, Sherry. Sherry, I actually interviewed Sherry for the book. She's got a great story. Maybe I'll have her on and sharing because actually I interviewed her for the release resistance piece in the book. And I continue to add and, and subtract. And um, anyway, Thank you. Hey, Rachel. Hey, <laughs> there's where I go get my taxes done. <laughs> Thank you for joining. <laughs> Hi there. Okay, I'm really going to get started. So here we go. Okay, so here's what happened. And I'll check in with you all. And you're welcome to add a few comments here and there, ask some questions. So um, I was on Facebook and I was watching a, I saw a meme by someone that I admire. I love their work. Adam Grant have a lot of things we agree with. Some things I find some distinctions in, but Hey, that's what makes the world go round. And have you noticed that in today's time, people can argue over anything. We all get so wound up and we um, we're ready for an argument on, on LinkedIn or Facebook or any of social media, Twitter, someone says something, it triggers us and we're in for the kill. And the, the point that this person, Adam Grant, made, he's a psychologist. He's also a, a professor, tenured professor, was one of the youngest people to make tenure at Wharton University. But I love his work. He's, he's very popular. And he said, you must tell someone when, when they don't meet your expectations, because if not, you're choosing comfort over growth. Coming from my place of knowledge, I thought could be true. You know, I always think there's distinctions, but I didn't really comment except to say, agreed, providing that the expectations have been set to begin with and agreed on and that you're not making the other person responsible for your experience. And then I looked down and I started seeing that there was, you know, like a, like a thousand comments on this thread. One was that, oh, that is the worst career advice and it's suicide and how fortunate for you because you're tenured, you don't have to deal with the real world. That's, you know, PhD piled higher and deeper. So there was a tax. Um, someone said, well, if you're really friends, they already know they let, they already know that they let you down. Um, and someone else said, yes, that's a great idea because my marriage ended in divorce after 19 years because he held on to a resentment that I didn't know was there. And then someone else said, not easy to do. It's going to make them very angry. And someone else said, well, what if they tell you that you're expecting too much? And I responded to a couple of these because I found such interesting assumptions written in some of these comments and one person that actually I think is joining today and you meet people on social media. So I love that. Um, she said, well, yeah, it's not easy to do. And I said, no, it's not because if it was, we would all do it more often. And there's reasons why we don't and we need the skills to do it. And someone said, well, what if they tell you, well, you're expecting too much? And I said, well, at least it would open up a conversation. She said, no, it wouldn't. That's a closed conversation. It's disagreement. And I thought, wow, it's only disagreement if you're not willing to be curious as to where it went wrong, where there's this lack of clarity. And so um, I wanted to ask the question to myself, is that something I need to write in, in my book to really make some distinctions here about how quick we are to judge? And I thought, why are there so many different opinions? 
Well, I'm going to share that right now. First of all, there's the context from which we're coming from. When we see a little meme, we add our own lens. We look through our own filter and we say true or false or yes or no. But here's the distinction. I did the same thing. I said, providing that you're not making them responsible for your experience and you've actually agreed on a set of expectations. Um, other people felt like they needed to attack for his level of expertise and that he hasn't maybe worked the kind of job they do. Other people were seeing the context from the perspective of the culture, the mindset, the skill level, or the relationship. For example, someone looked at it from a standpoint of best friends and also the assumption that someone actually knows your expectations and maybe that they're even responsible to meet your expectations. Another of the different opinions come because there's so many emotions, theirs and yours, and that's what creates this backbiting and these, these problems that happen. And then finally, there's the power structures, and I'm going to be adding this flavor to today, and I'm going to check in real quick with some people because some more are showing up. Hi there, Vicki. Katie. Oh, thank you, Colleen. Big fan. I've learned a lot. I, that means so much to me, really. I, this is just the icing on the cake when people are changing their lives because of this work. I, re, I really, I love this work when it helps people to have better relationships. That's always my goal. So we've got this context of what is a relationship, culture, mindset, skills. We've got emotions, yours and theirs. The emotional component is really big. Then there's the power structures. So let's look at that really quickly. We feel differently when we have to say, let's just take the context of saying the expectations were not met. Not necessarily you didn't meet the expectations. How does that land with you saying that to a subordinate? And let's assume the expectations have been agreed upon. How does that land when you talk about doing that to a colleague? And then what about a boss, a superior? That changes the way that we view the conversation because of the risk level. If you're looking at a, a subordinate, you may feel like you may feel sorry for them. You may feel like they need your help or your support, or maybe they've had a rough year. If it's a, a colleague, you might think, oh, is it worth it? Like, is it going to ruin the relationship? And then if it's a boss, career suicide. And that all depends on whether you're speaking of something after the fact, after the decision or if it's while the decision's going on. And in the end, it's truly about your own energy of intention. Why do you bring something up? To punish someone? To make a better relationship? To correct something so that someone can grow? I'm not going to be talking about intention today. It is in the book. It's a major part of the work I do, of cleaning your own energy first. Um, but I, I want to share today, this is the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to talk about the three kinds of resistance a key to overcoming avoidance because avoidance is really an outcome. It's, it's how you know that you've been resisting. Then I'm going to call this the countdown, the three rules, the two reasons for avoidance and one key to talking to anybody. Got someone else here. Hey, they're from Hungary. Wow. This is so exciting. You see, I, I believe we're all connected and this is proof. We have people from all parts of the country, different cultures, male, female, different races, at different ages, and yet we're all interested. We're all interested in improving our leadership. We're all interested in improving the world through our communication. I think that we are the ones that are going to be the change agents for all the stuff that's going on in our world right now. So I'm going to talk about three kinds of resistance. And so first of all, there's your resistance. Now we addressed this a little bit last week, and if you haven't, you can go see the you can go see the video, and the videos are saved on LinkedIn. If that's hard to find, you can go to my YouTube channel. Just punch in YouTube plus Marlene Chisholm. You can I'm loading up all these videos there for an easy library for you to share with your team. But we talked about your resistance and how to kind of have that self awareness, the emotional integrity, how to know when you're out of the flow, because if you know that, you can fix almost anything. Because I always think that we grow from the inside out and then the outside influences us. But I talked about the sand components. So I'll briefly review stuck, attached, negative and distracted. When you're distracted, whenever you're out of the flow, whenever you are negative, then you just have to know, OK, I'm in a state of resistance. Don't make yourself wrong. That's more resistance. You just say, wow, I'm in some resistance here. Let's see what's going on. Now, that's self-awareness is your key. The next part, and this is where most of us are better, we look at other people's resistance. And the way that we notice other people, 
if you're just observing, that's one thing, just the same as if you're just observing yourself. We say, wow, they're kind of high conflict. You know, they, they always have a, a disagreement. They're, they're high maintenance. They're, they're disagreeable. They're really hard to talk to. They're defensive. They're argumentative. And we can notice that. That's not a problem to notice an observable behavior. Now we're encapsulating it here and we're saying, well, we're, we're labeling them as high conflict. And we talk about that in the book. I'm not going to talk about that here. We do that. That's not always helpful. But when we start to notice observable behaviors, whether it's a in the power structures of colleague, peer, superior, friend, whatever that power structure is, when we notice it, that's not really a problem. The problem is when we have to have collaboration or conversation with someone that we judge to be high conflict. And what happens is we have resistance. So there's your resistance. There's noticing that, okay, I'm resistant. We notice their resistance. And then the third one, which is the most important one to understand, and we're going to talk a lot about it, is your resistance to their resistance. I'm going to take a quick pause, check in. Hi there from Kenya. Thanks for joining. Hi, Sabrina. And from Atlanta, Florida. Hi, Maria. Thank you for coming. Maryland again. I'm working with some people in Maryland, so that's probably why they're all showing up. And I appreciate that because we're going to be together on Thursday. Okay, so we're going to talk about your resistance to their resistance. How this shows up so that you can identify it is when you need to have a conversation and you can feel that you're in resistance. You feel that they're, you, you notice that they have some conflict toward you and you go, yeah, but I already know what they're going to say. What that means is I'm not going to talk to them because I've already concluded in my mind. Or, you know what, I would, but it's going to hurt their feelings. What that says is, I'm responsible for how they feel, and therefore I'm going to own not only my responsibility, but I'm going to own how they receive something. And there's reasons why, why we feel this way, and I'm going to share that with you in a minute, because this is going to help you break through that pattern. I used to have this pattern. I still have it sometimes. This is something that we're growing, not something we ever become you know, perfect at. Okay. So, um, so we're going to hurt their feelings or we're going to say, Oh, they're so defensive. And because they're defensive and because I don't want to hear that, I'm going to avoid them because I already know what they're going to say. It's going to hurt their feelings. They're not going to listen. They're going to be defensive. And I dread how they're going to show up. This is going to be difficult. Now, Sometimes the reason it's difficult is because the conversation needed to be had a long time ago and we've let it go on too long. That's another story that we can talk about at some point. And again, feel free to let me know what you're wanting to talk about in the future. This will help me build content. And there is a friend of mine, Derek Ingram from Days Gone By. Good to see you, Derek. Thanks for joining. Hey, Alan from Maryland again. All right. So. We're resisting their resistance and there's reasons why we are. And so I'm going to give you what's going to help. And I call this the countdown, the three rules, the two reasons and one key. So here's three rules I'm putting in the book, three rules to live by. There's some nuances in this. So, so don't get out there and start attacking. You know that I'm always about nuances and distinctions, never about solid. Yes, no, right, left, up, down, black, white. I'm not about that. I'm always about distinctions and principles and wisdom. So here's the three rules. The first rule is I'm completely responsible for my thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And that also means I'm responsible for my life experience. Even if you do me wrong, even if you do something that's wrong or hateful, I'm still responsible. I'm still responsible because if I'm responsible, I can fix it. I can come to peace. I can accept. I can forgive. I can set a boundary. I can learn. So if I'm responsible, that gives me freedom. If you're responsible, I'm not free. I, 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 I have to have you apologize. I have to have you understand. I have to have you change. But if I'm responsible, I'm a free being and I have choice. I have choice in all kinds of ways to respond, to feel, to react, to get counseling. There's all kinds of things I can do. So I want freedom. So to me, I'm going to take responsibility. The second rule is this, and this one's, this one's hard too. They are responsible for their thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and experience. Does this mean that I don't influence them by the way that I behave? No, because I'm responsible. And so if I'm rude, if I'm short, I'm responsible for that. And if they take it wrong, they take it wrong, but they're responsible for what they do with that. 
if I hold myself responsible and I allow other people to be responsible, then I stop withholding important feedback. If I come from the right intention to help them grow as a leader or as a friend to seek clarity and agreement and have curiosity. If I hold these two rules to be true, living by it is difficult because we make other people responsible for how we feel and we think we're responsible for everyone else's experience. Now, this is not a, an excuse to be rude and to be brash because the first rule presents, prevents that. So those are the first two rules. And then finally, this rule completes it. And why we're afraid sometimes is because we don't want to lose relationships. We really deep down care, even if we're angry with someone. And so I, I live by this rule. Disagreement doesn't ruin relationships. Disrespect does. Disagreement doesn't ruin relationships. Disrespect does. And I invite you to, you know, join in if you want to say something about ever being disrespectful. I, I, I feel that I have been disrespectful and I didn't recognize it. But now that I'm writing a book, I know that I know that sometimes interrupting or rolling my eyes or um, getting short with people or being impatient is actually disrespectful. So I'm working on that. I want to be more reverent towards people. Hey, Kathy, owning both sides of the conversation assumptions. Yeah. Hey, Gail, good, very good friend of mine, fellow consultant, got some good work out there, got a great podcast herself, CEO on the go, if you want to check it out. Um, and someone said, this is a LinkedIn user. Oh, thank you for sharing this. I avoid confrontation like the plague. I think my book will help you when it comes out. And it's a, you know that you do. You know that you avoid it. So if you can shift your mindset, that's going to change it. Um, hey, another one from Maryland. Maybe I've already said it. Katie, hey. All right, so um, if I live by these three rules and I understand that it's not the disagreement that ruins it, it's the disrespect. And if I can't hear you because I've got to judge you for having tenure or having a PhD or not being as educated or not being at my level or being above my level, if I disrespect you as a human being and don't see you as equal value, I'm gonna have problems. When we see people as equal value, we eliminate all the drama that's going on in the world. Hey, Katie, I struggle with this. Can't wait to read your book. I think most of us do struggle with it. And I try to admit my struggles because I don't think there's any sage on the stage out there. I believe we're all learning and we have different things that we learn at different times and we have different mindsets and cultures that we come from. But if enough of us have the intention of improving relationships and sharing our viewpoints and being curious and learning how to self-regulate, that's what's going to change the, the, the client that we're in right now in our world. Hey, Ongar, seen, I've seen him a lot. Um, thank you for showing up. Okay, so I've given you the three rules. Let's go back to the countdown. The two reasons that I find for avoiding. As I said, when I was talking about the post from Adam Grant and all kinds of people are, they're getting all wound up and disagreeing and disagreeing and debating with each other. We, we, we disagree, we avoid for thousands of reasons, but my work is about getting to the root. Like what are the roots that everything else grows off of? And I think the first one is feelings, emotions, their emotions and my emotions. And while we think that we don't want to hurt their feelings or that we don't want their defensiveness, that's the illusion. The reality is I don't like how I feel when you get defensive. And I don't like how I think about myself when you cry, if I'm a sensitive person. It always boils down to your own self-management. It always boils down to how you expand your, your capacity to let someone be where they are, which leads to the final key. This is the final key. This will change everything in your life. It has changed my world with everybody that I am in contact with. Be okay with who people are. Be okay with the way they see things. Be okay with how they feel. If someone's defensive, I'm okay that they're defensive. That's what they're doing to protect. But if I have the capacity to let them be defensive while I let that play out, and I can say, look, I'm on your side. Let's talk again tomorrow. If I can set my intention and guide the conversation, we're still in relationship because there's been no disrespect. If I can be okay that they clam up and I can say, this seems like this is sensitive to you and I really want for us to work through this and we don't have to be here this time next week. 
if I have the capacity for that, I'm leading, I'm guiding the conversation versus, well, they're defensive. So therefore, I, I have nothing else to do. Because as a leader in your own life, you always have a choice. As a leader, if you truly have the authority and power, you can probably fire someone. You can write them up. You can let them go if they're not willing. But as a human being and as an equal with other people in your friendships and in your family relationships, you still have choices. You can accept where they are now and hold the possibility for them to grow even further, just as you do for yourself. So that's today the lesson on power structures and three types of resistance. Um, <laughs> yeah, Samantha, can you teach that to U.S. Congress? Yeah, it, it's interesting how we're you know, in our world right now, we're getting to see these things play out. This is my own um, perspective. It's that I am just going to try to show up as the change I want to see. And I fail a lot of times, but I'm just trying to show up as the change that I want to be. And if enough people do that, we'll demand more. We'll redefine what it means to be a leader in Congress, in, in the Senate, in, in world leadership, once enough of us get clear about that and we're not playing the games and getting distracted and bashing other people and we let people be where they are and we use different skills and have the capacity to forgive them, so to speak, you know, for they know not. If we can have those different skills to see something different and encourage and empower people to line up with their highest and best authentic self, I believe that's where the new leadership is going because there's there's too many choices not enough responsibility. We're out of balance right now. And I believe that if enough of us get the clarity, the leadership clarity to lead from these kinds of conversations and we have the capacity to deal with our own emotions when these things go on, that's certainly what I'm working with in my life. And um, I'm excited to, to be on this journey with you. Again, you can go to YouTube. You can visit later to find this. This will be recorded. I'm having a bunch of these little videos cut up, so they're really short. Uh, as I start to market the book before the launch, I'm open to having you know questions from you um, that you want to hear about. And if you want to go to my website at marlenechisholm.com, you can get a free download and you'll be on my newsletter list for upcoming events and, and things that are going to be happening. So um, thank you so much. And um Hey, thank you, Yolanda. The change I want to see must begin in me. Absolutely. My mindset, let me be the model. It's really hard, but like we can't fix the world if we can't fix ourselves. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of my mantra. So thank you for joining me. I'll connect back later for those of you that are watching from a different time zone, watching later. I'll try to connect and, and chat with you or answer questions and I'll see you in June.